if I get a nat 20, you have to, uh, I, I, I don't know, I guess, dislike the video. Okay, so, uh, picking it up, not moving it, <laughs> it was a 17. So, uh, you can't dislike this video anymore, so go fuck yourself. Hey guys, welcome back to opening Digimon card packs. We're here with a second episode of Alternative Being. Last time we found some pretty cool cards, as well as, you know, took forever to actually open anything. We got cool stuff like uh, Z Garurumon and Chaos Gallantmon. So there's still 23 packs left in this. We only got one done, along with the uh, good old promotional pack. So this time, we should actually try and save a pack. Uh, we're going to try and not ruin it. The rest of them we can go ham on. We just need one we need, we got, we can save. This one is doing okay. Mm, I'm like, mm. I'm opening like a little bit of a uh, hole in it. I can definitely see that. I can see that there is a hole forming. I don't know why I'm saying the word hole so weirdly. Okay, okay, that's this has not been bad. Alright, come on. Come on. I know you guys love it when I open these. Okay. Pretty much perfect on the front. We just need to try and get the cards out without hurting the packaging. Let's see. Without hurting the packaging. Yeah, I don't care about the cards. I just care about the plastic. Come on, we gotta we gotta save waste. By that, I need to have so much plastic in my house that it kills me. Okay, so put that over there. Gonna reform this out. Yeah, pretty much perfect. Just a little bit of like plastic up there. The back is a little bit malformed, uh, but you can pretty much read everything there. So I'd say that's fine. I'm gonna crack my left left hand. I'd say that's good enough. So we can rip them all to shreds now. So either way. I'm going to go ahead and light up these cards so I don't see anything, because I don't want to see anything that could look special. All right, so first up, make sure that... Yeah, that's pretty damn focused. Okay. So first up, we've got Pekmon, and as always, if I read off the card, that, uh, like, if I blaze past, a, blaze past a card that, you know, you wanted read out, that's most likely because I've already read it. So go back and see the first episode if you want to see more, so... Anyway, we've already seen Techmon, so we'll move on from this. We have Skull Knightmon. I don't know what he's fighting. He's, like, protecting himself against, like, another sword. It could be Deadly Axemon, so I'm not sure. Either way, uh, it is a black type, but it also has a blue Digivolution symbol. That's interesting. We'll have to see what that could even mean. But either way, it's a black champion with 4,000 DP, kind of around basic numbers for a champion, though we've seen some champions that have like 5,000, so. Eh, you could you could have done better, but either way, its ability is on play. If you don't have a Nene Amano in play, you may play one Nene from your hand without paying its cost. That is, I mean, you'd have to do a cost of four. Then again, that is not that bad for a champion. A cost of four, which is pretty much just the same cost as playing a Tamer. So you're pretty much playing a Digimon and a Tamer at the same time within the same cost, so. That is actually pretty useful, now that I think about it. And other effect is, on deletion, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card has blue flare or twilight trait, add it to your hand, trash the rest. Huh? So that means, <laughs> it says trash the rest, but you're only at excavating one card. So if it doesn't have it, then just trash that card. Kind of. Uh, it makes sense if you've played this game before and you understand trash the rest or put the rest of the bottom. It just means whatever cards are left over. If there are none, then you just don't trash anything. But still, kind of weird. Anyway, it's inheritable. is just reboot. Even though this is just a common, I'd say this is pretty good if you're going to base a deck around like Nene or maybe even Blue Flare. Because if it's looking to also try and excavate like stuff like Blue Flare out, that's actually a pretty good idea. Oh, God. Teeth. <laughs> don't like teeth. Either way, I'd say that's a pretty good card for just being common. What's up next? We've got Full Metal Blaze, Full Metal Jacket, even. It's the funniest thing. We haven't run into any red or yellow cards yet. Either way, it is an option card, and it's got D-Gurumon. 
blowing out its zeode cannon. It's actually some pretty cool art of it just blasting into the sky. Anyway, it's a 8 cost option card with the ability main, return to your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to their owner's hand. Then if your opponent has 8 or more cards in their hand, return one of your uh, opponent's level 6 or higher Digimon to the bottom of its deck. So that means like you're literally deleting it, but keeping it in a place that they can't even access. Like the bottom of the deck is so far away. There's no cards, at least so far, that allow direct searches. It's always going to be reveal off the top of the deck. So that is actually pretty good. Though the problem is you have to try and get uh like eight cards into your opponent's hand, which is not actually that bad. But still, it's just it's an ask. But I'd say that's pretty good. Though the cost might be a bit too much. Ooh. Looks like that's the counterpart of the Gabumon card that we got. But this is Agumon, or just Black Agumon. It is a rookie with 1,000 DP, and its ability reads, uh, Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one card with Greymon in its name, or one with Gabumon, Garurumon, or Omnimon in its name, and add them among them to your hand. So it's not or, it's both. Place the rest of the top of your deck in any order. That is still... And like I said about Gabumon, Black Gabumon, that is a really good effect to be placing cards off the t on the top of your deck. Because you can pretty much stack your draws. That is really good. Then it's Inheritable says, Your turn once per turn, when one of your other Digimon evolves, gain one memory. Not a great Inheritable, but that on-play effect is so good, I wouldn't even care. That's kind of, that's the same thing that Gabumon's got. That, that ability is just so good, I don't think you need much of an Inheritable off of it. You know the way, what's up next? We've got another Gilmon. <laughs> like how he's just looking into a puddle. You know, that could be a puddle of his own piss, who knows? He's just pissing himself. Oh, it's another Antilamon. As always with the extra sets, we're going to be running into repeats much more commonly. So next up we've got Heaven's Judgment, the first yellow card of the bunch. It's got uh, Trubimon, Trubimon Virtue. Or Trubimon good, depending on, like, a game or whatever show you're watching. Like, throwing down God's Thunder, it looks like. I mean, it is one of the three Archangels, so that makes sense. Either way, it's called Heaven's Judgment and has a cost of seven. Uh, while you have a green Digimon or Tamer in play, you may use this card without meeting color requirements. So, it pretty much is asking for, like, a uh, like a Trubimon, Mega Gargomon kind of deck. Let's see. Main, uh, activate the effect below for each color your uh, Digimon have. Each color your Digimon have, activate it again. One of your opponent's Digimon gets negative 6,000 DP for the turn. So, if you have a green and a yellow out, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, a mega. It just has to be green and yellow. So, you could have a card like Terurimon out. You literally, and it doesn't say you have to target a separate Digimon. You can target the same. So, you can pretty much delete something instantly. Sure, for a cost of seven, that's a lot, but be able to delete like something like a uh, like a mega, since most megas will be at twelve thousand, like that. That's pretty good. And then security is one of your opponents' Digimon gets negative twelve thousand DP for the turn. It's pretty much an insta kill. This is actually a really good card, I would say. It's also some good art. So what's up next? We've got Galmon. <laughs> I mean, I like the art, but it definitely is just kind of like, yo, he's chilling. He'd be chilling after a workout, and he's like, "Damn, my ass is fat." He he be he be looking like Steven after he's doing a couple of works out. He's like, "Man, I'm still fat." Steven's not fat. I will tell you that, though. You guys don't know Steven. He's never even showed up on the channel. Now that is a crime, and I don't know how that I don't know how that happened. But either way, Galmon's just sitting out after working out, I guess. And his ability is on play. Both players draw the top card of their decks. I mean, that kind of fits with the whole Z-Gururumon thing, trying to put cards into your opponent's hand. And then it's Inheritable is, your turn once per turn, when a card adds, uh, when in effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, gain one memory. Kind of a lackluster effect, though it does kind of add into the Z-Gururumon kind of plan. It's just, it's kind of just meant for its on-play effect, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, Gaumon's got my, got my emotions exactly with this card. It's like, eh, works. <laughs> it's like, eh, I guess we're here. Though I do like the art of him just sitting out. And it shows off Galmon's tail, which is something that 
most like renditions of Galmon don't show off all that much. That Galmon has a tail. If you look at his like uh sprites like in uh like DS and in uh Dusk and Dawn, you can definitely see his tail, but like in 3D models, you don't see his tail that much, which is you know kind of weird either way, because he is a dog. So next up we've got Ooh, Black Growlmon. I like that they're actually naming these ones, like, their actual names. Like, it's not Gururumon, and then he's just black in the picture. No, it's Black War Gururumon. But, you know, semantics aside, we've got... Oh, this is drawn by Koki. Now, this is some good Koki art. I like it when he doesn't do blindingly bright white colors. I like it when he does, like, darker colors. Or it could be a sheet, I'm not actually sure. Could be a day. I don't judge. Though I do judge Black Gal Black Black Growlmon. Uh but yeah, this is actually some really good art by Koki. I like how it's like <laughs> Black Growlmon's really looking evil in this photo. He's like he's really he's like chasing down an enemy, it looks like. Anyway, uh it is a purple and red champion with five thousand DP. And its ability reads Digivolve two from uh level three with Yilmon in its name. When digivolving, trash the top two cards of both players' decks. And then you may return one Gilmon or one card with Growlmon or Gallantmon in its name from your trash to your hand. I'd say that's still pretty good because, like, as we could see, Chaos Gallantmon and Megalo Growlmon or War Growlmon's effect is wanting the opponent to have cards in their trash. So, definitely plays towards the skill, though, if you're playing against a purple deck, like I keep saying, it'll actually be helping them, so... Yeah, eh, I guess it depends. Then it's Inheritable reads, On deletion, you may return one Gilmon or one card with Growlmon or Gallantmon in its name from your trash to your hand. Hmm. I don't know in what order trashing works and then Inheritables. Like, do you trash everything and then Inheritables happen, or do Inheritables happen right as Digimon's destroyed? Because if it's happening before your own Digimon gets destroyed, that means you can't target whatever cards go into the trash from their death for this effect. But if it if you could if you trash them then activate inheritables, you could really just take out the top card and just, you know, have that be revived back to your hand. So that's interesting. I guess it depends on rules. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I this card's a good card. Next up we've got Greymon. Greymon Cross Wars. <laughs> it's the blue Greymon. And the art is I mean, it's okay. It's not really much of, like, an action scene. It's just kind of like uh, Greymon powering up its fire. It's, there's no other Digimon in there. You get you get brownie points from me if there's more Digimon in a, uh, you know, in a picture. But its effect, it's a blue champion with 4,000 DP, and its effect reads, on play, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one Kiriha, uh, Kiriha o Aonuma. Or, it, I guess, <laughs> that might be a little bit of a mess up with the card for Kiriha, because sometimes it's written, it's written as Kiriha, sometimes it's written as Christian, or Christopher. And unless the Christopher card says this card is also treated as Chris Alnuma, it might not target the original Tamer card for uh, Kiriha, which could be a problem. <laughs> and then uh, one blue or black card with Digicross requirements among them to your hand. So I don't know what it's targeted. Metal Greymon? Maybe. And then its other effect is on deletion save. And if you've seen my video about uh, Cross Encounter, you'll know what save does. Pretty much just put it under a tamer. And then it's Inheritable reads, when attacking, draw one. Inheritable, really good. On play, I mean, this is a pretty good card in general, but it's it's not meant for attacking. It's meant for, like, actually, like, evolving instead. So I can tell. It's not meant to be staying as itself. It's supposed to be helping whatever's above it. Pretty good card, but on its own, it's not going to be doing much. It needs to be in a team. So next up, we've got Keenan Cryer. Everybody's favorite Tarzan or uh, George of the Jungle ripoff. <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's a Digimon. He's not a Digimon. Anyway, Keenan is a purple tamer with a cost of four, who has the ability, start of your turn if you have two or more, if you have two or less memories, set your memory to three. Kind of basic for most tamers. Some don't have that. Then its ability is all turns. When one of your purple Digimon with Ravemon in its name 
or bird or avian in its traits is deleted by suspending this tamer, draw one. If that Digimon is deleted by an effect, uh, gain one. Gain one memory. Hmm. As you know, most purple decks are based around pretty much trying to kill yourself, which is not, you know, like, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, so, wanting your Ravemon, which is going to be your Mega in this situation, to be deleted in order for this thing to activate, I don't know. I would be playing something else, like a different Purple Tamer, to, like, try and keep your Digimon alive. Like, it'll depend on Ravemon's effect, but just drawing one card for having your Digimon be deleted, where you can draw cards for just Digivolving. I don't know how useful this would be, but it's security reads, play this card without cost. Kind of basic all Tamers. I think it's cool, but I really would like to see what it's archetype is reading for. It's also cool that he's got the Digivice first. Anyway, last card of the pack, and we've got... Ooh, now that is pretty awesome. But just... This is alternative art, I believe. Yep, I can feel it. And it's got texture. That seems like it's pretty rare. We've got Ultramon. Ultramon? That would actually be a cool Digimon. You know, you're not allowed to steal that idea from me, viewer or... Uh, Bandai, I'm making my own OC Digimon Ultramon. Don't know what that would be. There's probably already an Ultramon, but whatever. Anyway, we've got Omnimon Alter S, and this is a alternative art. So this is actually probably on the level of a secret rare, more than a super rare, but it is just a super rare in this pack. And this art, that looks pretty fucking cool. Though I don't know, he's like surrounded by this purple miasma kind of circuit board place. I wonder what's going on. But... Yeah, uh, it is a white Digimon that can evolve from a blue or red, and has 15,000 uh, DP. Man, this is just some really good art. Like, this art is really fucking cool. Like, I was pointing the Blitzgram on arm at you. But its ability is DNA Digivolve 0 from a uh, blue level 6 and a red level 6. It even reads right down there, Digivolve unsuspended with two specific Digimon stacked on top of each other, so... It does explain that as well. Then its ability is very long and very small, so you might not be able to see it, but I'll read it out to you. When Digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 8,000 DP or less, and return one of your opponent's level 6 or higher Digimon from the, to the bottom of its owner's deck. So this is looking out to be like, uh, it'll take out maybe an ultimate and then also a mega. I've seen some megas with 8,000 DP. I think Boncho Stingmon had that, but... That one already had things that would make it stronger. I actually really want to make a deck around that. Still have not gotten all the cards to do it. But that's a pretty good effect. It's kind of the same one as... Where was it? It was Full Metal Blast. Yeah, Full Metal Blaze. Very similar. Anyway, its other effect is also... All turns, when this Digimon will leave the battle area other uh, than by one of your effects, play one Blitz Greymon and one Crest Gururumon from this Digimon's Digivolution cards without paying the cost. Then place this Digimon at the bottom of your security stack face down. Damn. So when it would leave the battle area other than by one of your own effects. So what that means, leave the battle area by like it being deleted. If it's so, you could get this thing to delete itself somehow by like fighting something else. Because it can't be one of your effects. You could be trying to like run into a trap that your opponent had set for you. Then you get two attackers out of it. And then you've got this beast acting as a guard. Maybe not one of the best Jogress Super Megas I've seen, but I, the art makes it look really fucking good. Like, I can't really show it in person. Like, you can only see how much, but, like, if I, if I try and cover the lights and stuff, I wonder if it would shine it off. Either way, it's hard to see, like, on a camera, but in person, this card's really good. But, yeah, it's effect... I could definitely find uses for it, dude. Even, like, I know you can't see it, but, like, even the card itself, when you shine it around, it's got, like, circuit circuitry as it's, like, as it's foil kind of thing. It's not circuitry foil. That's actually really good. I like this card. I like this card. <laughs> but, yeah, that's definitely my favorite art-wise so far. Its effect is a little bit lackluster, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's time. <laughs> I love making stupid noises. Stupid noises are my favorite. That's why you watch the backlog. You like it when I moan. 
that is pretty sus, dude. Why do you like it when I mow? It's pretty sus. <laughs> anyway, next up, we've got a copy. So Skull Nightmon, we've seen that before. Full Metal Blaze, we've seen that before as well. Uh, another Agumon. I would actually want like four of each of Gabumon and Agumon in this situation if I wanted to make a deck. Let's see, next up we've got. That, I've never seen this Digimon before. We've got Fake Agumon Expert. He's a fake faker. I think you're the fake Agumon around here. You're comparing yourself to me. Ha! You're not even good enough to be my fake. <laughs> That's him. He's Shadow. This is Shadow the Hedgehog, my man. Anyway, I've never seen this Digimon before, though. This is, <laughs> I guess it would make sense if there is a, like, a dark version of, like, every Agumon. I need Snow Agumon Black. <laughs> black Snow. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, so this is a purple rookie with 2,000 DP, and its, and its ability reads, Your turn, once per turn, when its opponent's Digimon is deleted, by trashing one of the same level in your hand, draw two. That's actually really good. The problem is, it's its own effect. This thing is so weak, you wouldn't want to keep it out on the field most of the time. Though, if you, like, somehow delete an opponent's, uh, like, rookie level, and you had another rookie in your hand, you could just draw two. You're pretty much already trashing by trashing, and by getting rid of that one card, and that's kind of already the point of a purple deck. I'd say this is a pretty good card, though, it has to be kept out on its own, and it has no inheritor, so. And it's situationally viable, I should say. Though I do like how he's, like, wearing a professor uniform. He's got, like, a tongue sticking out. <laughs> anyway, next up. Also, you've never seen an Agumon that's blue. At least in my recollection, so. That's unique. Next up, we have actual Greymon. <laughs> Black Greymon, actually. You can also see, like, regular Greymon. It's not Black Greymon. It's Greymon Blue by most accounts. But yeah, you can see regular Greymon just standing in front of it. It looks like it's like coming to murder him, which is actually pretty cool. Anyway, it's a Black uh, Champion with 5,000 DP. And its ability reads, when Digivolving, one of your other Digimon may Digivolve into a level 6 or lower Digimon with Garurumon in its name for the Digivolution cost. Win that Digimon with Digivolve using its effect, reduce the cost by two. So you're pretty much like double evolving. So if you like ran out of memory uh, and Digivolve into Greymon, you could like, it's kind of like a rush Digivolution. Like you can instantly Digivolve another Digimon for a cheaper cost as well. So I'd say that's pretty good. Then it's Inheritable Reads Reboot. So basic Inheritable, though this is kind of an interesting idea, like a double Digivolution. Don't know why I am snapping so much tonight. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's a pretty good effect, and I like the art. It kind of feels anime-ish for some reason. Either way, let's move on to the next one. We've got another Heaven's Judgment. Then we've got Renamon. Dark Renamon, really. Because it's got like a, a dark, a dark leaf. <laughs> you ever got a dark leaf? Me too, man. Anyway, the art is actually really good. I like it around like the kind of ethereal lighting and how the moon looks. That's pretty cool. Anyway, it is a yellow and blue uh, rookie with 2,000 DP. Inheritable reads, on play, until the end of your opponent's turn, two of your opponent's Digimon with four, uh, 4,000 DP or less can attack. I mean, I'd say this is a good card to be using if you're going second in a game. You're pretty much stopping them from playing, from like attacking at all for a good turn, as long as they don't pull like a really strong champion. Though it is kind of a... Kind of a not amazing uh, ability. It does have Digivolve Zero from Viximon. So we're going to have to find the Viximon card. And then it's Inheritable Reads. Your turn once per turn. When you'd use an option card with a memory of two or more, gain one memory. So you're pretty much just... Because option cards are going to be the best thing to be using with a Renamon deck. So that pretty much lowers down the value of uh, option cards. Which is actually really good. Because you can be using so many. So... I'd say this is actually a pretty good card just for the Inheritable. Though I guess it'll depend. It really will depend on situations. Next up, we've got Black Gargomon. Gargomon! <laughs> I would love Gargomon. I don't know why. Just when I had the VHS of, like, the episode where uh, Henry was scared of Gargomon evolving, or Terrymon evolving, I was just like, I watched that a lot when I was a kid. 
I like that episode. Anyway, we got Black Dargomon firing down on somebody, it looks like. <laughs> kind of basic art, though. I still like it. It is a black and green level 4 with 4,000 uh, DP. And its ability is Digivolve 2 from a level 3 with Terriermon or Lopmon in its name. So you can, you, this really is meant to be a truly mod black Saint Gargomon deck. Uh, I just like saying Saint Gargomon because I think it's a cooler sounding name. Anyway, its ability is Alliance, so we know that. Uh, that's all it's caught. And then its Inheritable reads, your turn once per turn, when an effect suspends another Digimon, this Digimon gets plus 2,000 until the end of your opponent's turn. I mean, not bad. That's kind of the point of a green deck, so it works out. I mean, not an amazing card, though having Alliance, as I've said before, is pretty good, so let it pass. Next up, we've got Gaia Reactor. What is this card? I think that Digimon, if I'm not mistaken who that is, that's Galmon, uh, Gyalmon, which is the X evolution kind of Weird evolution for Greymon. Uh, it was in Digimon World uh, Dusk. That's why I like it. It's probably one of my favorite Greymon evolutions. But I don't think that's the regular mode. I think that's what's called the Fierce Fire? Fierce Flare mode? Kind of like an alternative mode for it. Though I have not seen an actual card for it. I only recognize it from a Digimon data pack for Pixel Pack. So, yeah. Anyway. Gaia Reactor costs 6 and its ability is main, choose one of each player's Digimon with the highest play cost, delete all other Digimon. So you're pretty much just like making it like a Mexican standoff, pretty much. Just you, mano y mano. Then security is activate this card's effect. I mean, that seems really good. You can pretty much wipe a field. Like if they're setting up like rookie rushdown, you can pretty much wipe a field. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. But yeah, you can pretty much just wipe up field with this, pretty much. That, and for a cost of six, that seems pretty cheap. I'd say that's really good. Depending on if you have, like, an elevated game state from the other player. Like, you have a, a Mega, and they only have, like, a, a Champion. This is actually would be, like, setting you up for pretty much great stuff. So, that's a pretty OP card, I would say. But then again, there's probably situations where it doesn't work well. Alright, here we've got... Agumon, or Agumon S, it is, this art is really weird. <laughs> it's like very weirdly sized Agumon. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Maybe it's just because we're looking at it from the back. And usually when you see pictures of Agumon, it's going to be Agumon from the front. But it's just kind of a weird angle to get Agumon from. Anyway, its ability reads, uh, Digivolve Zero from Koromon. Start your main phase if you have a red or yellow tamer in play gain one member. Kind of a basic ability. Then it's inheritable reads, your turn once per turn. When one of your red or yellow tamers becomes suspended, draw one. That's pretty good, but the it depends on what the red or yellow tamer is doing. I'm gonna guess it's like some kind of Marcus card, so it's going to have some kind of okay effect. So eh, I'd have to see how what kind of synergy this could be, but even if it's like a basic red, just drawing is pretty good, so. Eh, art's a bit weird, effect's a bit weird, though Inheritable's alright. Next up, we've got Kiriha and Nene Amano. So we've got a mixture card for the two of them. I mean, I always felt that Kiriha had such a different art style than somebody like Nene or Taiki. He just feels like he's from an edgy anime. Maybe it's because of his eyes lacking, like, not pupils, but like, the light in their eyes, like uh, other anime characters have, it just feels like he's designed for a different anime. I don't know. It gets better in part two, but still. Anyway, it's inheritable is the name of this card slash tamer is also treated as Kiriha Onuma or Nene Amano. So you can pretty much have this be targeted by anything. And then start of your main phase. If there are two or more Digimon in play, gain one memory. Okay effect, I guess. I wish you would rather have a set to three. And then all turns, when you would play one Digimon card with Blue Flare or Twilight Trait in its Digicross requirement, by suspending this Tamer, you can place one card from under your Tamers and one card from your Trash Digivolution cards at, for Digicross. So you can check in your Trash for Digivolution. Or for Digicross. 
That's actually pretty good, since you have a lot of stuff back in that trash. So then, uh, security is just play this card without any cost. I mean, I'd say that's pretty good, because it's targeting into your trash for Digicrossing. And Digicrossing's already so OP that it's like, that's already pretty good. So, I'd say that's a pretty OP card. Anyway, last card is Gold Vigermon. Everybody loves Gold Vigermon. He doesn't have a reason for existing. I always felt like he doesn't. But, uh, yeah, it shows him, like, oh, I think he's, like, trying to punch, uh, like, Trubimon Evil, or Trubimon Evil. Or other people might know it as Trubimon Vice. <laughs> I'm guessing, oh, it is a digital, it is an armor digivolution. I think Gold Vigermon is supposed to be the armor digivolution of Vimon using the Digi Egg of Destiny, not the Digi Egg of Miracles. I actually really like this art. He just looks like he's great fucking, like, he's giving him one punch man vibe. <laughs> that I like the art. It is a level four uh, armor Digimon with 6,000 DP. I don't know. Would you be able to play this with a Magnamon deck? I don't know. Its uh, ability reads uh, Digivolve 2 from Vimon. Armor Purge, which I hope you know what Armor Purge does. Go look back at my other episodes if you don't know. When Digivolving, one of your opponent's Digimon gets negative 2,000 DP for the turn. If you have a blue or yellow Tamer in play, or if you have a card with the Armor Form trait in the trash, one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's turn. Uh... I guess if you were like trying to target an ultimate or something, you could use that first effect to mix in with the second effect. To try and stop an attack or a block. Though, I don't... I mean, most, like, Digimon that have blocker are going to be lower leveled. It's not going to be a Mega that has blocker. So this could let you just kind of bypla bypass some of these defenses. Which ain't bad, but it's like, Magnamon's such a better card. But I do love the art. It is definitely interesting. I think Beedramon in general is just a Digimon that looks so weird that I'm like, it's interesting to see him in different situations. Anyway, I think I'll open one more pack, even though we're at like the 34 minute mark. I think we'll have enough time to do at least one more, depending on how many cards are in there. Come on, I'm opening it off screen. I could do the tearing. Yeah, I could tear it. That'll probably bring you more good, but it'll also create more trash. So I don't like it. So I don't like doing it, man. Anyway, let's see what is in store for us with this pack four. I'm gonna make sure I make it work so I don't see what's at the back. Okay, so first up we've got Gururumon. Black Gururumon. Uh, <laughs> I like it because it kind of mirrors the uh, Greymon one because it looks like it's attacking an actual Gururumon. You can even see Gururumon's eyes underneath the vest. You know what I would love? I would love like a like an art gallery that uses like all the Digimon cards art, but they remove everything else but the art. Just because I'd love to see the full pictures. They'd probably look amazing. Either way, it is a champion, black champion with 5,000 DP, and it's only got a Digivolution cost of two. Anyway, it's inherent, it's effect reads. When Digivolving, one of your other Digimon may Digivolve into a level six or lower Digimon with Greymon in its name, uh, in your hand for Digivolution costs. And then that Digimon would Digivolve into this, by this effect, reduce the cost. So, when one of your other Digimon may Digivolve... So this kind of works back and forth. It's kind of like a feedback loop. Like, first you Digivolve this, then you Digivolve into Greymon, then you can Digivolve it into another higher where Gururumon, and then Digivolve into Metal Greymon. And it kind of... It, it, it works... It's kind of like a feedback loop. That's pretty cool. Bits Inheritable just reads Reboot. So, basic Inheritable, but it seems like both of your Digimon will have a Reboot on them. Uh, pretty good card. I like the art, like, like the visual, like, fights. Like I said, brownie points if there's more than one Digimon in the card. Next up, we've got Tarnished Hero. So, it's showing uh, Trubimon and Ghoulmon Black, which is pretty cool. Nobody really knows Ghoulmon Black, but I, I know Ghoulmon Black. Anyway, it only costs three. Uh, it's purple. And it says, while you have a green tamer 
Green Digimon or Tamer in play, you may use this card without meeting color requirements. Main, delete one of your opponent's level 3 Digimon, then place this card in your battle area. Then it's got a delay effect. Your opponent may trash one uh, option card in their hand. If they do not trash a card, gain two memory. So you're pretty much asking them to like throw away cards, or else it'll make you stronger. I could see where this card could help, but then again, if you're facing off against another purple deck, because you can never control who you're fighting, uh, you might just be helping your opponent again. But I definitely like the art of them like standing together. Ooh, it looks like they're in a forest sometimes. I can see like trees in the background. Next up, we've got Deadly Axemon. It's counter Skull Nightmon's counterpart. Let's see. Oh, it shows it fighting actual Nightmon. Instead of Skull uh, Nightmon. So that must be who they're fighting in the uh, the Skull Nightmon art. Which I guess makes sense. Skull Nightmon and uh, Nightmon will probably not like each other. Anyway, it is a level 4 with 4,000 DP. has the effect on play by trashing one card with Blue Flare or Twilight Straits in your hand. Draw two cards. Uh, I guess I could see some synergy with that just to draw more cards. I guess if you had an extra card you don't want in your hand. Though, like, black and blue are not really known for using uh, their trash to, like, fuel their engine. So it's like, you'd literally just be giving up a card. And that card could be useful at points. Then its ability, other one is, on deletion, reveal a top card of your deck. If that card has blue flare or twilight in the straits, add it to your hand, trash the rest. I think that's the same thing Skull Nightmon said. This narrable is... All turns, this Digimon gets plus 1,000 DP. Eh. All I can say is eh. Not super useful, though if there is a cross for it, that would be that would be very helpful. Either way, it's kind of an okay card. Let's see, we've got Galgamon again. Uh, this one's new, Trident Gaia. So this is a option card for Victory Greymon. It is a red option card with a cost of 8. And its ability reads, main, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest DP. A Digimon with 13,000 or more is deleted. By this effect, scratch the top card of your opponent's security stack. So, um, you could literally just delete a random Digimon for 8 costs, which could, you know, be viable sometimes. Though I guess this is meant to be targeting something that is so strong you can't fight. So you're... Just trying to get rid of that. And then it's like you kind of already had a fight. because You're trashing the top of their security stack. So I'd say this is a pretty good card, but only in very late game. Definitely like the art of... Because, like, that's one thing not a lot of people know about. Victory Draymond's sword, the Draymond Breaker, can break into two halves. And you can just put them on his hands. I always like that. Victory Draymond's just cool. What can I say? <laughs> Either way. Let's get a move on. Next up, we've got... Oh, this is actually the first red card we've gotten. Damn. For solo red. We've got a Trudimon. We've got a Yomon. Oh, we got a new one. We got Yokomon. I was wondering if that was even going to be in the pack. Anyway, it's the dark version of Cubimon. And I like how it has, like, teeth on it. Like, it's... <laughs> it's got, like, fangs. Which you don't really see with Cubimon. But yeah, this is pretty cool. It's, like, firing out. It's, like, box fires. Though that's a different name in the pack. I would love it. If Digimon cards also labeled, like, I don't know, somewhere near the bottom, like, in the traits area, like, the Digimon signature move, because I always felt like it's funny that they all have a signature move, but, you know. Anyway, it is a yellow and blue champion with 5,000 DP. Uh, its ability reads Digivolve 2 from Renamon. Uh, there is also a silver Renamon, so I don't know why that card doesn't exist yet. The name of this card slash Digimon is also treated as Kyubimon. Which I guess is nice. Uh, on play, when Digivolving, until the end of your opponent's turn, one of your Digimon gains Blocker. Blocker is a good ability in certain circumstance, but like, I guess it's good that it's giving it off to a different Digimon. So I guess you could give it off to a Mega, then that Mega is pretty much a, like, will block an attack. So that's good, because you wouldn't want it to be stuck on a champion where like, it will die and you cannot progress. Uh, let's see. Then it's Inheritable reads, your turn once per turn. When you would use an option card with a cost of two or more, one of your opponent's Digimon gets negative 2,000 DP for a turn. So it kind of synergizes with the other Renamon by making it so that you would have, uh, 
you would get even stronger or like fuck up your opponent even more by using auction cards, which is good because you're always going to be wanting to use auction cards. Next up, we got where Blackware Guru. I always love this one. Definitely one of my favorite starters from Digimon World Dust. Gotta say. <laughs> Definitely like the art. It's another Koki art. And he, like I said, I like it when they draw like dark colors. Dark colors are something that I think they're great at. I love that. Either way, and this art is actually really cool. He's like staring you down. So, where Gur Black Wear Guru Mont is a ultimate level with 7,000 PP. And its abilities are blocker. So, interesting that an ultimate has blocker with not that much DP to really use it with. Then, when digivolving, one of your other Digimon may digivolve into a level 6 or lower Digimon with Greymon in its name for the Digivolution cost. When that Digimon would digivolve by this effect, reduce the cost by 2. So, it is kind of the, like I was saying, the feedback loop, the feedback loop, which is really nice. Then it's inheritable, it's just blocker. So you're giving something blocker. Kind of lackluster stuff, and like, if you're not using it with that whole feedback loop, it's not going to be helping you much, so I love the art. So, you know, when Koki gets it right, Koki gets it right. Next up, we've got, ooh, another copy of Azure Beast and Shining Dragon Bullet. So I don't have to worry about it being bent, though, because this one's not foiled. So, next up, we've got Terriermon Assistant. And Terriermon Assistant did show up in Fake Agumon Expert, so it makes sense it would be here. Anyway, it's just showing it like getting hit by a fucking book. You know what would be a good idea? What if uh, you take Agumon Expert, but you give it like a War Greymon Expert? So he looks like a professor, but he's also War Greymon. You know, I'd be coming up with these ideas. War Greymon Expert. Toy War Greymon. Come on, Bandai. Get to fucking work. <laughs> anyway, it is a level 3 green with only 1,000 DP. Uh, and some terrible reads. The name of this card slash Digimon is also created as Terriermon. So you can put it inside the Terriermon deck, I guess. Uh, your turn. When an effect suspends this Digimon, one of your opponent, one of your Digimon get plus 4,000 DP this turn. But it has to be suspended by an effect. So I don't know what that could be targeted for. Either way, it's inheritable reads. Your turn. When a lion suspends one of your Digimon. Ah, so you like would want to use alliance with this, I guess. Uh, this Digimon may Digivolve into a level 2 green Digimon card in your hand for the cost. And this Digimon would Digivolve with this effect, reduce the cost by 2. So, you would have to have Tolurimon or Black War or Black Gargomon on top of this to actually be making use of that effect. Eh, I see some uses. I like the art of just getting it be assaulted by a book, but still, I'd have to find specific uses for this. Finally, we've got Falcomon. We kind of need that if we're going to make a, a like a Falcomon deck. And this is some pretty cool art. Just it throwing a shuriken, I guess. And all the wind coming around it. It's also the uh, 2008 version of Falcomon. Because the old one is the one that's in, uh, what is it, Digimon Survive. The one that's like gray, yellow, and green. This one's the black, purple, and red version. Which I remember growing up with, but that's because, you know, I grew up with Digimon in kind of like the Data Squad era. That's what the kind of Digimon was coming out on TV. So, <clears throat> it's a purple level 3 with 1,000 uh, DP. Instant ability reads, on play, reveal the top 3 cards of your deck. Add one purple card with Ravemon in its name, or Bird, or Avian in one of its traits. And one Keenan Crier among them to your hand. Uh, place the rest at the bottom of the deck in any order. Then it's, a, it's inheritable reads, on deletion, if deleted outside of battle, your opponent trashes one card in their hand. The effect is pretty much basic for any kind of archetype you're going to be going for. The uh, inheritable, it could be useful, but like because you give that choice over to the opponent and you don't choose for them, you'll never actually know what you're going to be getting rid of. So, and if it's working against a purple card, a purple deck, it's going to be you know, going against you. But I like the art. Definitely like the art. So, I'd probably say that my favorite out of this session was most definitely Omnimon Alter S's, uh, was it, alt art. Because this alt art is, it's beautiful, man. And I guess we'll end it off on there. So, next time on uh, looking, opening Digimon card packs, we're going to be, you know, searching out for like a secret rare or something. That'd be good.
And before I end this episode, I want to thank all of my YouTube members, including the Disciples of Epsilon, Trey Lafari, Gray, Phoenix, Shell Bagan and Hummus, Darcy Lanfranco, Freddy, and Yuki. Without you all, this channel wouldn't stay afloat. So thank you for all your support, and I'll see you guys next time!